Kingdom Come Deliverance joins an impressive list of impossible ports on Nintendo Switch and ranks among the most ambitious yet seen on the system. Originally developed by Warhorse Studios for PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC back in 2018, Kingdom Come Deliverance is an open world fantasy RPG powered by CryEngine 3. Marked by sprawling landscapes, complex towns, plus the more advanced CryEngine features for its time, it truly pushed last-gen consoles to their limits. And still does in fact, given that their performance struggles to always lock at 30fps to this day. So today, the challenge of making such a game run on Nintendo Switch, a portable machine with greater hardware limits, isn't a trivial one. Rising to that challenge then is Sabre Interactive, a team that, on paper, is more than qualified for the task. Between its work on the Switch ports for the Crisis Trilogy and The Witcher 3, the studio not only has close experience with CryEngine on its CV, but also in leveraging the power of Nintendo's system to handle richly detailed open world RPGs. All combined, does this expertise pay off in a worthwhile Switch port? Secondly, in balancing the visual cutbacks on Switch to achieve a playable frame rate, how exactly does it compare to the last gen versions? And lastly, yes, what exactly is the resulting frame rate like on Switch? Let's find out. Let's be honest here, even without previewing what's to come in this video, you'll likely know roughly how this is going to turn out. Switch's 2017 mobile technology is showing its age, and we're long overdue a successor. In cases like Kingdom Come Deliverance, or Crisis, or The Witcher 3, the expertise of the developer handling the port only goes so far. When facing strict hardware limits as we have on Switch, a balance must always be struck between performance and visual features, and we have to accept it for what it is. For Kingdom Come Deliverance, all of the engine logic intended for PS4, Xbox One and PC systems must somehow translate to Switch's Tegra X1 chipset, to three active ARM Cortex cores clocked to 1GHz and a lesser 3.5GB of RAM. It's no small feat, and so, as the saying goes, expectations have to be managed here. Image quality is degraded, visual settings are dropped, and the frame rate is often lower than PS4 or Xbox One's. But the fact we have the game at all on Switch, I think, is something to be celebrated. If you want the best-in-class experience at 4K max settings, you know exactly where to go elsewhere. But it's still great to see this in a portable format, so long as it's playable. So long as the distractions are minimal, it has a good reason to exist. With respect to the huge challenges facing this port then, let's see how it stacks up. Kicking off, the loading times are a surprise win on Switch. Let's pit it against the older Xbox One version, measuring the time it takes to get from each system's front-end menu to the game's title screen. Sadly, Kingdom Come Deliverance has always struggled with lengthy loading times, in booting a save, reloading checkpoints, or even in fast travel. It's at times a real test of patience playing PS4 or Xbox One from their stock mechanical hard drives, with so many loading screens lasting minutes at a time. Impressively then, Sabre has managed to accelerate these transitions on Switch, and notably the speed of booting the game. We get a 1 minute 26 second wait to get to the game's title screen on Switch, for example, which is hardly a snappy turnaround, but still that chops well over a minute of waiting compared to Xbox One, itself coming in at 2 minutes 37 seconds. The install footprint of the game is potentially reduced on Switch as well, in texture and audio asset quality, which means less data to load in overall. Either way, first impressions are positive. To the visual comparisons and the good news first, this Switch release does not skimp on CryEngine features and in fact goes beyond what you might expect. Again, it'd be too easy to show the game next to the PC version maxed out at 4K. So instead, let's level the playing field by using something more comparable in the Xbox One version, captured on the most updated build. Both run Kingdom Come with a 30fps target, and unlike the launch build in 2018, both current versions fix that 
31 FPS cap issue we had back then to give a more expected 30 FPS line today. In terms of resolutions, the Switch version has a similar setup to the Crisis Trilogy Saber worked on. We get a 720p target while docked, dynamically dropping to 540p when the GPU is stressed. Temporal upscaling is used to help reconstruct the image, and it does so effectively. Certainly, image clarity struggles to match up to the typical 900p reading on an Xbox One or PS4 for that matter. It's softer, facial expressions lose definition in the upscale, as does the finer detailing across a landscape. But still, it looks respectable given the calibre of the hardware at hand and will no doubt be better enjoyed on Switch's own display in portable mode. One final point, a form of sharpening is used to the Switch image, on grassy elements or the silhouette of distant trees, the frame is sometimes over sharpened in broad daylight, which isn't terribly flattering to the low base resolution. Beyond that though, this is about as good as you might expect from the hardware in terms of pixels being pushed, and if nothing else, it's serviceable for a portable experience. Sticking to the positives, the Switch release packs in as many CryEngine features as possible. We get full use of SSR, screen space reflections across large water bodies, plus water simulation. Honestly, SSR could so easily have been removed in the process of optimizing for 30 FPS, and yet it makes the grade here. Next to the Xbox One version, it's very much on par in terms of quality and very impressively handled. Though the early barracks area during rainfall does pay a price in frame rate as we'll get to later. Next up, we have POM, Parallax Occlusion Mapping on Switch. In short, this adds 3D height and depth to the floors, to rocks, mud tracks, and the formation on castle walls. Switch gets a high quality implementation of POM here, and by comparison, is at least on par with Xbox One. And finally, the biggest surprise of all is that this Switch version includes Sfogi, standing for Sparse Voxel Octree Global Illumination. This is a real-time GI feature that is not included on PS4 or Xbox One, making it a real breakthrough on Switch. Indeed, Sabre pushed for Sfogi in the Crisis Switch port as well, with a similar result. It runs in a scaled down form at a much lower resolution than what we'd get on PC. Plus, there's a limit to the effective distance that rays are traced. It means we get a lower precision version of the effect, causing a slight shimmering artifact as light hits surfaces, but it's still impressive to see. Overall, the inclusion of SSR, parallax occlusion mapping, and Sfogi is far beyond what I'd expected of a Switch release. It's impressive too that tree density at range is identical to Xbox One, while much of the geometry is a match as well. Light shafts are also included, albeit at a low resolution, flitting between the trees at sundown to create this picturesque image. However, the cutbacks are clear as well, with draw distances being the first main issue on Switch. There's simply more pop-in of shadow maps, grass, foliage, and geometric elements during any quick movement. Notice how all of these elements pop into view as we run down this hill, at a range much closer to the player than Xbox One. It's perhaps inevitable given the power difference between them, though to an extent the low resolution on Switch does help mask the resulting pop-in here. Also, in terms of close-up detail, Switch runs with low quality shadows. The turnout looks respectable, with a similar bokeh pattern to the shadows that we saw in Crisis, but undeniably it's running at a lower resolution. Elsewhere, grass density is dropped, while certain texture assets are also lowered in resolution, notably on character clothing. What's the turnout for performance then on Switch? The bottom line is that Switch struggles to cap at 30 FPS and that's evident from the very first village. On the upside first, we do get a fully V-synced, locked 30 FPS at points. Open outdoors areas with zero NPCs nearby, with only yourself and the grassy fields in view, run at 30 FPS especially well. Credit where it's due, the fact Sabre has optimized these broad open areas to hit 30 FPS is respectable. The snag is, and unlike the Xbox One or PS4 versions today, frame pacing issues are present regardless on Switch. 
even in the best case at 30 fps, there are these occasional frame time spikes to 16 milliseconds on the left hand graph. It's not overly aggressive, and certainly not to the extreme level of Bloodborne, thank goodness, but it does still, at points, detract from the perceptual smoothness of movement. If all we want to do is go sightseeing around woodland areas, this would be fine. But Kingdom Come Deliverance is an RPG built around bustling town areas as well. We have battles, we have cutscenes, and sadly, much of this is able to plummet Switch's frame rate into the 20s and lower. The cause for these sub 30 FPS drops is usually pretty clear. The reality is, in playing on Switch, you must brace yourself for a 20 to 30 FPS range where there's any high concentration of NPCs or building structures. Town centres are a major culprit, obviously, and so just running down a high street like this at any real pace takes us well into the mid 20s as geometry, shadows, and NPCs drawing quickly. Potentially, this is a classic CPU-related bottleneck for Switch, which stands out most with hitching at times as detail streams in. During this barracks sequence, for example, we even get brief moments that hitch down to 15 FPS. So there is a wide range here, from the very best case at 30 FPS outdoors to the situation around inner cities. Speaking on the cutscenes, anything rendered in engine also struggles. Thankfully, a lot of the main story beats are presented in pre-rendered cutscenes that are perfectly capped at 30 FPS. No problems there, obviously, it's all just video. But anything rendered in engine, running from that Tegra X1 silicon, will see performance dive well down into the mid-20s and lower. To put this into perspective, neither PS4 or Xbox One were immune to these drops. Each had their fair share of hitches and stress points, but they're exacerbated here in the move to Switch's more CPU and memory limited hardware. In direct comparison, there's a mixture of fortunes here. Complex scenes around towns run much better on an Xbox One. No question, the last gen Xbox hits the mark at 30 FPS more consistently, and likewise around taxing points beyond the city walls. Switch delves into the mid-20s around these points by comparison. Interestingly though, the cutscenes are, against all odds, often comparable in frames delivered per second between the two. Certain close-ups of our leading man Henry run better on Switch, while other points show an Xbox One lead. Put this down to the pruning back and resolution on Switch, and the dialed back visual settings, but Switch is often more performant in this early encounter with the bandits. However, typical gameplay is obviously the priority, and is still often under the 30 FPS line on Switch, and all of that despite the many visual cutbacks put in place. Six years on from its original release, the Switch version of Kingdom Come Deliverance is a fascinating exercise in squeezing the most from the now aging Tegra X1 chipset. Of course, we know going in that Switch isn't aiming to offer the best big screen experience. We have consoles or PC for that. As with the Switch ports for The Witcher 3 and Crisis though, this one is much more about the sheer joy of seeing if it's at all possible. It's about the hypothetical scenario, whether a careful balance between visual features and frame rate is possible to hand in a decent portable take on the game. In the end, it does appear the ambition to lock at 30 FPS loses some ground to its visual features. The dynamic 540p to 720p range is an acceptable pixel count given the resolutions used on PS4 and Xbox One. And equally, the inclusion of CryEngine's SSR, Parallax Occlusion Mapping, and Svogi are miraculously all in place on Switch here. For the tech enthusiast then, this is an impressive release to behold. And all of that despite its obvious limits in frame rate. But that's all for me today. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to like or subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell for instant notifications as any new video lands. To get a high quality version of this video and many more, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net, and to get in touch directly, you know where to find me. But from me for now, thanks for watching.